Um, hello to all um, the lovely people here joining me that I know and some are new to me. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, this is the Living Pantry Gut Health 101. Uh, some of you may be coming at this already kind of experts and some of you novices, but I hope regardless, um, you'll be able to find something that resonates with you and that you can hopefully incorporate into your life. Um, so basically, yeah, I wanna, we're gonna talk about how digestion and the food you eat is connected to immune function. And while we're still waiting for some people to come, I just figure we could take a few breaths. I know Monday can be a hard day and today's kind of cloudy overcast. So um, yeah, let's just start with one deep breath in. Just filling your abdomen with air and then letting it go, letting it out. I'll take another deep breath in. And this time on the exhale, just really try and slow your breath. Just really just kind of bring yourself into a calm and centered state, leaving whatever annoyances or stress that the day accumulated behind. And then one last breath and make this one really count. Really fill up that abdomen and then slowly release. If you need to wiggle, shake anything out. <laughs> Do a neck roll. Ah, okay. Um, what do you think, Rashina? Should we wait a little bit or? I think we could probably next go steps? Right. Okay. So um, Rashina did a great intro. I want to, I'll share a little bit more about my life personally, my personal connection and experience to um, wellness and healthy eating that basically started here. <laughs> this is circa 1977. Um, I'm about one and my mom put me to work early. She needed a sous chef. So she just plopped me on the kitchen and <laughs> I could hold a spoon. So, you know, any of any of you out there who feel like you can't cook, um, if you can hold a spoon and stir, really that's, you know, you're halfway there. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, I, oops, I like to say, ah, <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> There we go. We have a little <laughs> preview of what's to come. So I like to say I was born to a family of um, health food revolutionaries. And I don't know, what does that mean? They were into healthy eating and clean eating and living and really questioning the norms um, about, you know, what we were being fed, you know, in the mainstream and just trying to get back to what's natural and real. And um, beginning at the age of 15, I was responsible for cooking vegetarian dinner every night for my family. And that really um, created a strong, deep relationship with food and me and my connection with food. And I have this thing here saying food is spiritual. And what I mean is it's not like anything to do with religion, but I'm sure you can recall like sometime cutting into like a really fresh piece of fruit and the smell and the texture and everything just so full of life and it really feels fills your spirit. And so that's something that I feel like we're losing a little bit with a lot of these processed foods. So food is political in that, you know, we're sort of given choices and told what to eat by commercials and big industry. And if we question that, you know, it's, it's seen as a threat. Um, and definitely when I was growing up was not popular to eat plant-based diet and it was seen as suspect and subversive and like, how could you even survive? But now we know better and, you know, I think things are changing for the better. Um, so I'm a nutritional health coach and this is a sort of burgeoning field that a lot of people are learning about or have have yet to hear about. Um, basically what I do is I provide resources, support and structure for you to feel great in your body, to have more energy, less stress 
and through simple, easy lifestyle changes. And the journey towards well-being can be challenging at times, but very rewarding. I know it. I live it. I'm here to hold space for you in your healing process. Something I forgot to mention in the last slide was um, even though I grew up in a healthy household, uh, I did you know, at one point uh, I was in the arts and I was doing interior decorative painting, working with a lot of chemicals and it really had took a toll on my health. And for many years I suffered chronic, chronic sinus infections and respiratory issues. And it took me a long time to heal, but I did really want to heal through food and herbs and the natural way. And I have, I live, I live to speak it that I, I no longer struggle with any of those issues. So it is possible. You just, you know, it, it can take a little bit longer, but the effects are much more lasting than if you treat with the drugs. So let's get to the main topic. Um, what is gut health and the microbiome? So the gut or digestive system contains a vast ecosystem of different microbes that play an essential role in digestion and immune function. This community of microbes is referred to as the microbiome. So digestion begins up, where's my cursor? It begins up here in the mouth and the salivary glands. And then it goes all the way down here. And all these organs play really important roles in um, taking the nutrition out of the food and separating what's bad and, um, and within housed within all these organs and tissues are all this vast community of microbes, different types of microbes. And they are essential to our well-being, to our health. So here's some fun facts, gut facts. Each person has a unique composition of gut microbes. 60 to 70% of our immune system function happens in the gut. So normally, like when we were learning biology back in the day, we would think of immune function as T cells, antibodies, white blood cells. And yes, all these things are part of um, keeping us healthy and fighting infection. Um, but the majority of what's happening that to keep us healthy and to fight infections is really happening in our digestion, in the digestion process. And our microbiome is now being referred to as a second brain. And why do we say that? Because there's more information traveling from the gut to the brain than to the brain, from the, from the brain to the gut. The brain is actually sort of a type of commander in chief. It's letting us know when we have, you know, invaders, when things are off balance and telling the brain then to communicate to other organs so we can, you know, be balanced and healthy. So currently you have salmonella and candida in your microbiome <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, and so why do I bring that up? Um, because Again, when I talk about an ecosystem, there's it's more than just bacteria. There's um, yeasts and viruses and um, spores. We have just like a bunch of these little guys just <laughs> everywhere, and they all play a role, even the bad guys. So um, we have friendly bacteria or microbes. They help support your body in digesting and healing, and um, uh, turning the nutrients into proteins and amino acids so your, your body can use them. Uh, we have the neutral microbes, which are just kind of hanging out and minding their own business. Um, so they don't hurt, they don't harm. And then we have the unfriendly, the parasitic, which they can cause harm to our bodies when there's imbalance in the population. And the neutral bacteria, they actually can help in balance the scales towards no uh, unfriendly over, overgrowth. Uh, so what are some signs of an unhealthy gut? When we think about unhealthy digestion, you know, the, the common symptoms and signs are indigestion, gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea. So, but a lot of times we don't think about things dealing with our thought processes or our moods um, 
such as brain fog, headaches, mood swings, and depression. Now, if you're experiencing these things, it's not a you know, it's not a red flag saying you have gut an unhealth, an unhealthy gut. However, it could be an indicator that there are some things off. Um, and that maybe you could, before you turn to more extreme measures, work on uh, strengthening your gut health to um, create more balance in your mood and just clarity of mind. Um, lastly, skin issues. So I think a lot of us forget that um, a skin, our skin is an organ and it is the barrier between us and the world. It's what's keeping everything in and it also filters out toxins that we don't want. And it works in very closely in conjunction with our digestion and gut health. So um, if you do have eczema, psoriasis, rashes or acne, it, this is actually a good indicator that you might have some irritation or some autoimmune responses going on in your gut there's things that you're eating that maybe are irritating um, in your digestive system. So that is definitely, yes, you can treat, you know, these skin issues topically. And of course you should, but in addition, you really could look into um, your diet. Uh, so inflammation is the root cause for most illness and disease. And not all inflammation is bad, it's a natural immune response in attempt to protect and heal. So for short periods of time, you know, if you get a cut, your body's going to create some maybe pus or, you know, inflammation, send the red blood, red blood cells there to heal. And so for a short period of time, it's great. But the issue is um, now more than ever, we're experiencing a lot more inflammation in our bodies. And uh, one of the one of the larger culprits is sugar um, and processed foods. So studies have shown that higher that a high a high sugar diet and processed food lead to inflammation and degradation of your gut lining. And I like to you know put a visual to it that sugar is like a spy with many disguises. And why do I say that? Because it has so many different names and iterations, and it's. Um, you know, uh, processed chemically in different ways, but it functions in your body in a similar way that if you have too much of it, it causes, uh, it wreaks a lot of havoc in your health. So in the chat box, type another name for sugar because there's so many names, if you can think of any. And then also you can include um, one of your favorite foods that has sugar in it. And be honest, it's okay. I love chocolate cake. I love really anything chocolate. So, <laughs> um. No audio? Yeah, Suguna, you're muted. You're muted. Okay, can you hear me now? Sorry. Where do we leave off? Okay, so I'm like reading. You just um, did a list. <laughs> read the list. So maple syrup, honey fruit, these are the healthy ones that we don't need to like worry about. Fructose, sucrose, yeah, those can be high fructose corn syrup. Uh, yeah, that is a, a big. Um, that's a big bad guy. Gummy worms. I used to love those. Glucose, fructose, salad dressing. That's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the effects of fruit when we eat them as it has sugar. We'll talk about that actually in the next slide. Um, chocolate. Yes. Candy corn. <laughs> um, chocolate all the oses, caramel, ice cream, ginger ale, all the fruit, soda, yes. So um, ketchup, I'm glad somebody brought up ketchup and carrot cake, so, okay. Um, so yeah, um, here's a few extra, oops. Here's a few extra 
names for sugar. I personally really distrust Florida crystals because, you know, Florida man probably invented them. So bad joke. But anyway, um, barley malt, agave, um, saccharose. Aspartamine is actually not a derivative of sugar, but it's a chemical sweetener that does the opposite of what people think it does. People think they can lose weight from it, but not. Um, you might be surprised, but not, not D. She's too smart. Ketchup, mustard, tomato sauce, soup, salad dressing, peanut butter, sadly. I mean, not all of these of every brand has this, but you gotta be careful. Um, crackers, chips, anything savory that's processed, there's a chance there could be a sweetener in there. Um, and um, so, yeah, so, I personally am not against all sugar and anything sweet, um, but you know we have to be careful about quantity and quality. So is there any sugar good for you? Yes, if it is attached to fiber as in fruit, um, then it is good in moderation because fiber is kind of the stuff of life for our digestion. And it's in its most natural form when it's in fruit. And um, it also the amount of fruit or sugars, you know, it could depend on your body's metabolism and your current state of health. Um, so you have to take, you know, many factors into consideration. Six tablespoons of sugar per day or 24 grams, according to the um, American Heart Association. Um, it's actually six to nine, six for women, nine for men, but I just put six here because that's kind of like a flat, you know, it's, it's better to aim low with sugar because, you know, you probably will eat a little bit more sometimes than you mean to. But the main point that I'm, you know, bringing this up is that you should be in the one in control of adding sweeteners to your food and not corporations. Like I personally would rather, if I could only have six teaspoons of sugar, I'd rather have that in a brownie than in tomato sauce or mustard personally. Um, so someone wrote in, um, yeah, I've, I, I did list monk, monk fruit over here. We have the, the, the additive, the sugar additives that are not in fruit that I do like to work with are maple syrup because um, it's low glycemic and it contains um, minerals and vitamins. Honey in the raw has medicinal and soothing properties. It also contains enzymes and nutrients. Monk fruit, this is great because it has no calories and no effect on the blood sugar. Um, I also like that it doesn't have that bitter aftertaste um, that like stevia does. However, you have to be careful because monk fruit is often paired with other fillers. So you just have to make sure that, you know, xylitol, it's okay for some people, some people not. You, you just kind of have to experiment with these things because um, a lot of this is just very new to our bodies and our world. Someone asked about dates. Um, yeah, dates are great, again, in moderation. Um, date syrup, yeah, I mean, sure. It, again, like, I can't really advise you personally in your life, what you're doing, but yeah, sugars in moderation, just what I'm trying to bring awareness to is the least processed, um, closer to the closer to the natural form, the better. Um, Genevieve, I don't know yakon root. Maybe you could share at the end a little bit more. Thanks for bringing that up though. Um, so next slide would be, so yeah, the bottom line is that um, in the food industry, profit is their number one concern and, you know, long shelf life and convenience, increased speed of production, reduced cost of production, instant gratification for the consumer, um, emotional connection. Um, Michael Moss just released a book called Hooked, which is really interesting if you want to do a deeper dive on the food industry and its connection to unhealthy foods. Um, so I didn't cover too much additives, preservatives, food coloring, thickening agents. I feel like I could spend the whole class just doing a deep dive on all the different names and um, functions of these chemicals and additives that are found in processed foods. But um, 
you know, one meal of processed food won't kill you on the spot, but the long-term effects of this daily consumption will definitely take a toll sooner or later because our bodies are not designed to ingest chemically altered food. You know, it, our bodies are these incredible like computers that can, you know, it fights so hard every day to keep us alive and healthy and well. But if we keep sort of sabotaging it by feeding it these these chemicals and additives that are not natural, it's, it gets harder and harder for the body, you know, over time. And I just really want to acknowledge that diet culture places a heavy amount of blame and shame on individual consumers, on us. And really the root problem begins with the fast food industry because they've just taken over. It's everywhere. You almost can't avoid it. You know, you go to Trader Joe's or Whole Foods and you think you're buying healthy food, but when you go and read the ingredients, you'll see, you know, gar gum, you'll see xanthan gum, you'll see, you know, sugar is like, you know, sugar in the raw, but it's like the first ingredient of like anything. And so you just have to, you know, I think we're at a point, a tipping point where people are becoming more conscious and trying to like spend money um, to be more healthy. And the food industry is, is catering a little bit more, but you know, we definitely have a ways to go. Um, I don't have a good segue for this. I just <laughs> wanted to bring us back to talking about the, the microbiome and just how incredible it is that um, it's such a vast ecosystem. And it's, again, we're just learning so many things about it. Um, and over the last 10 years, you know, in the past, science and medicine really wanted to focus more on the hearts and the lungs and the breasts and like stool and the digestive system. It's kind of icky. It's not very sexy, but we're learning how important it really is. So um, in one gram of stool, there's many microbes as stars in the universe. So there's just trillions of stars in the universe. Um, so why did I bring that up? Also, because um, um, when we when we talk about gut health, uh, I'm sure a lot of you already know about probiotics. And just for those of you who don't, a quick review: probiotics are the friendly microbes that are, naturally occur in certain fermented foods and in your gut. Um, common strains are Lactobacillus and Bifidobacteria, um, but again, like I said before, we are just beginning, we're like at the tip of the iceberg when it comes to really understanding which bacteria are good and how they really function. Um, I think another um, even like newer field in gut health that's being talked about more now is prebiotics, um, which is food for the friendly microbes that currently live in your gut. And so prebiotics, um, when you eat them, when you eat these fiber rich prebiotics, it helps everything move and flow with ease and grace. And friendly, it's the friendly microbes, they only eat fiber and they break down these fibers that our mouth and stomach cannot. So it's this like perfect symbiosis that's happening. Um, and I just wanna add a side note that, you know, with probiotics and prebiotics, you definitely can buy them in pill form or powder form but it's not the ideal way to consume. If that's the only way you're gonna get probiotics, you know, maybe if you're traveling or you're just hit a really busy stressful time in your life, then, you know, yes, that's better than nothing, but really ideally um, you should be um, getting them from, from fruits and vegetables, like that live energy that comes from the fruits and vegetables. So, um, eat the rainbow is like a new phrase that uh, a lot of people are saying now. And basically um, when you, when you look at the wide array of fruits and vegetables that are here, um, you want to have a diverse, when you're eating, it's easy to get like in a rut. It's like, oh, peas and carrots, broccoli, peas and carrots, broccoli. And they're all great and good. But each, um, 
each vegetable and fruit has its own set of nutrients and um, phytonutrients. So phytonutrients are a micronutrient that are similar to antioxidants that are great for um, fighting free radicals and their um, immune system building. And um, one way to tell that a plant or a fruit is high in phytonutrients is by how dark or deeply pigmented the, um, the fruit or vegetable is. Um, so when we're talking about probiotic foods, um, I'm sure many people know yogurt. Um, it's really important with yogurt to eat the plain stuff because often um, the amount of sugar and additives that are put into the flavored yogurt, you might as well just have ice cream. So like just have some ice cream. <laughs> um, and kefir is like is similar to yogurt. It's more of a liquid. Um, and you can actually get kefir that's um, non-dairy, that's coconut or water-based. And um, kimchi, it's not for everyone. I happen to love it. It's a fermented cabbage um, and veggies. It's a Korean staple. Then you can just have like a little bit. You don't need to eat like a whole bowl of it. It's pretty strong and it's just like a nice little side dish, like a tablespoon or so with your meal. Um, it can be great. like with um, rice. Sauerkraut, make sure you get the lacto-fermented. Um, it doesn't mean that it has dairy, it's just referring to the starter bacteria um, that has all the helpful probiotics. Miso and tempeh are fermented uh, soybean foods. Miso is a paste and normally it's used for soup, but sometimes I like to put it on toast or crackers. And tempeh is um, another fermented soybean product that people can use in, sometimes for like a meat substitute. It's high in protein and you can saute it and add sauces and stuff. It can be an acquired taste, but um, I like it. Um, so prebiotic foods, um, for your gut, bacteria, uh, plantains, bananas, apples, watermelon. Um, I just like to point out it's important with like apples and watermelon to eat seasonally. So um, apple season is from fall to, you know, winter, uh, middle of winter, and then watermelon is, is summertime. And, you know, produce is best eaten when it's like fresh somewhat local and definitely seasonal. Uh, onions, scallions, leeks, garlic, um, veggies, pretty much all veggies. You could consider um, prebiotics because they have a lot of fiber, but some are more fibrous than others and are considered kind of high on the list of prebiotic foods like asparagus, collards, kale, Brussels sprouts, snow peas, beets, I love beets, dandelion leaves, and jicama. Uh, so there's also beyond um, veggies, there's seeds. Flax and chia seeds are great in smoothies or oatmeal, or if you make your own crackers or breads. Um, barley and oats are grains that are also um, great for your gut health. Um, I preferred rolled or steel cut, not so much the instant form. Um, and of course, the lovely cacao, dark chocolate in small portions. Dark chocolate is better than milk chocolate. It has lower amounts of sugar. So now that you're eating all these great probiotics and prebiotics, how do you know you have a healthy gut? What are signs of a balanced healthy gut? So I apologize if anyone's offended about talking about feces, um, but it really um, it says everything about your health. Um, if you pay attention daily to what's going on, um, you can learn a lot by the consistency, the color, the smell, all these things. Um, a regular daily bowel movement that's solid but not painfully hard. Uh, it leaves your body quickly with little encouragement. Um, it's easy to digest after you eat and you feel full but not heavy or exhausted after eating and minimal gas. Like some gas is, you know, gas happens. Um, healthy, smooth, radiant looking skin. Again, when we were talking about skin health and gut health, there's um, a definite connection. And, you know, when I'm eating like lots of veggies and when I'm like really on track with my diet, I definitely notice um, my skin sort of glowing and looking 
looking dewy and lovely. Um, a balanced mood and good energy. Um, you know, all this food, um, probiotics and prebiotics food, when your body's, you know, being fed exactly what it needs, um, it hums like a, like an engine and you just kind of like, you know, can glide through life just a little bit more easy, like more mental clarity, good mood. It's, um, yeah, it's subtle, but it's also really noticeable at the same time. So um, we learned about um, some of the whole foods, you know, that are good to keep around, but um, like the fresher things, but what do I like to keep in my pantry to cook with? Um, uh, these three ingredients are definitely staples. Um, they're amino acids. They have amino acids in them. And they, amino acids are essential for the building blocks in your body. And um, there's the soy base, the, the Bragg's is the like most prominent brand, but there are other brands out there. Um, so this is a soy based, it's similar to soy. If you don't know about Bragg's already, it's similar to soy sauce. Um, but for some people, soy sauce is problematic because it's often made with wheat. Um, and this just has like a little bit different flavor profile. It's like a nice nutty umami um, profile, great for sauteing. Um, it is pretty strong, so you, you know, use it pretty gently. Um, the coconut aminos are um, good for people who can't eat soy products. Um, also, they have the coconut aminos are lower in salt, lower in sodium, and it has like a sweet, a, like a slightly sweet, but not sugary sweet. So it's nicer for lighter vegetables. Like I like to put it with snow peas or um, what else do I like to, I don't know. It just depends. Oh, um, sometimes it's nice with bok choy. Um, and lastly, apple cider vinegar. I'm sure everybody knows uh, that's a sort of hot topic and trendy item in the wellness world. Um, it's really important that it's raw and unfiltered. Um, the mother that's in there, that's sort of like stringy, cloudy stuff, that holds the friendly bacteria, that holds the aminos. Um, it's what makes the apple cider vinegar um, that much more nutrient rich and helpful for your gut. And, you know, I know a lot of times they say that you should just drink it and that's sometimes a little too much and for people. So, you know, you can use it in salad dressings. You can, um, you can even cook with it. Sometimes I like to marinate my tempeh in it before I saute my tempeh and I'll show, I'll share a little, um, recipe that has, um, a very simple recipe that uses apple cider vinegar and you don't taste it as prominently. So um, another thing that's really important and I, I kind of feel like I could spend an entire, um, I feel like I could spend an entire class on fats and healthy oils because for those of us who lived through the 90s, there was just this real um, rail against fat and everything had to be low fat and skim milk. And um, they really were selling us this narrative that the way to lose weight and be healthy was to not have any fat in our diet, which, um, you know, there are oils and fats that can be problematic. And yes, if you are eating fried foods every day, and cooking everything in, you know, tons of lard and butter, yeah, that can be problematic. But um, when you sort of pull back and, and reevaluate like how you are using fats in your in your day to day cooking and eating, um, it really um, fat is necessary for um, for the organs. It protects the organs and the brain. It's it's food for the brain. And um, it also, there's a lot of um, oil soluble vitamins that wouldn't be absorbed without the oil. So everything serves a purpose and within, within moderation. Um, I really like these oils, the avocado oil, coconut oil, um, preferably MCT oil, uh, olive oil, um, ghee, which is clarified butter. Basically they heat the butter and then they skim off um, the whey, which has lactose in it. So if you're lactose sensitive, um, 
there's a chance that you could eat this. Um, if you're hyper lactose intolerant, it's probably better just to steer clear to be safe. But um, another really important thing is to stay away from hydrogenated oils. Um, they're processed chemically and the chemical residues are not good. Also cottonseed oil avoid because cotton is not grown as a food product and um, they can use different types of pesticides and chemicals and processing that wouldn't necessarily be approved if it was considered a food crop. So if you see cottonseed oil, just try and stay away from foods that are that have that. Um, let's see how we're doing for time. Um, simple and delicious condiments to nourish your gut. Um, I, Roshina, I sent you a PDF that has just like a little summary of this lecture. Plus it has, um, that has some recipes for these. These are like little condiments that I make all the time. I like to keep in my kitchen um, just to make things tasty. I think sometimes it can be intimidating with the cooking culture everything is so fancy and complicated and we feel like it has to be that in order for it to be delicious, but not necessarily so. Um, one of my favorite condiments to keep on hand is the red pickled onions and apple cider vinegar. It's a great way to um, get your cider vinegar without, you know, chugging it and choking on it and whatever. And um, it just may, it kind of goes with everything, sandwiches, salads, soups. Um, I like it on mushrooms mm -hmm. and it lasts, you know, about a week in the fridge. Um, the sesame ginger sauce, ginger is really great for um, detoxing and it's really soothing for digestion in your gut. And um, it also has garlic in there too. And banana jam, it's really fun. I like to make that um, for breakfast. And sometimes I put it on my pancakes or in my oatmeal. Um, it's good in yogurt. It's best warm though. It's best served warm. Um, so, um, another thing that we all know, we all know this, but do we really do it? Do we really drink enough? And in fact, now I'm saying this, my mouth is dry. And if you want to take a quick water break, um, water supports your gut in the process of detoxing, which includes healthy bowel movements. If you tend towards, um, being constipation, constipated, um, try drinking more water, and I know for a lot of people, the flavor, you know, it lacks flavor and excitement, but you can add mint, cucumber, berries, mm -hmm. citrus. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that you can add and it just, it's like so low, low maintenance and low key. Um, and it really is really nourishing. And I know, um, again, you know, for a long time, it was eight glasses of eight ounces of water a day. And now there's this trend of like drink your weight in water where you divide your weight into ounces and it's very complicated and, and you can research that and if any of that resonates for you, great. Um, one great indicator of knowing if you're drinking uh, enough water is looking at your pee and if it's light yellow to clear, you're hydrated. If it's like straw color, you're like, okay, but you could probably drink some more. And if it looks like apple juice, then that's like you're dehydrated and just start drinking some water. That would be one of my suggestions to make it low key. Cause it's, you know, it's hard, we're like busy and it's hard to remember to like, sometimes it's just, we forget. And here I am talking and like my mouth is parched. I'm gonna drink some more. Um. Yeah. So, you know, be gentle with yourself, but also try and be good to yourself. I find that when I hit that afternoon slump um, in the day, if I drink a glass of water, it really sort of clears me up. And I don't, you know, in the past I would have turned to caffeine, but I've, I've learned that um, actually, you know, that tired feeling is just actually dehydration and, um, and caffeine would just make me a little more dehydrated, even though at that moment, it might give me like a perk of energy. So, um, what I really hope you walk away from in this, um, from this class is to be a boss of your gut and understand what you're feeding your microbiome and pay attention, this is really important, pay attention to how you feel before and after you eat, 
because your body is always communicating with you always, always, always. And sometimes it just takes time to learn to, to decode um, certain cravings or certain things. But most of the time, you know, if you really just take a moment and tune in, you're like, oh yeah, I need this or I need that. Um, and this, this picture here of the food babe, she's a food activist and she actually kind of did an incredible thing of um, sort of unwittingly, she ended up challenging the craft macaroni and cheese for the yellow dye number five or whatever dyes they had in there um, and sort of calling them out because it's, you know, a staple of most kids diets and these artificial dyes definitely are not good for anybody. And eventually they listened. She was able to like get this campaign going and they really listen to her and change their ingredients. So it goes to show that, you know, all of you, just by the fact that you're being here right now, you have an interest in, you know, taking those next steps or you already have, you know, developed a strong relationship to food, but, you know, we can make a difference over time and we can have influence over big corporations. Um, and then, um, you know, you don't need to be vegan or vegetarian to eat lots of fresh vegetables and fruits. Um, consuming plenty of produce and water are the healthy foundations for a radiant body. You know, like I said in the beginning, I grew up vegetarian, pretty strict vegetarian, close to vegan almost. Um, we did eat yogurt and honey, but you know, not a lot of animal products. And that's great. And, um, but over time, I also realized that um, the addition of fish and eggs really um, helped with my hypoglycemia. And so um, everybody's body is different. And in different parts of your life, you're going to find you need um, different foods, different things will work for you. Um, and other things won't. So um, yeah, it's really a journey. And my role as a health coach is to, um, I can, I can, unlike a doctor, I can really take the time to sit with you and understand your history, what you're going through, where you want to go. And my favorite part of being a health coach is the, um, the relationship that it's more of collaborative than sort of top down, because ultimately you really do know what's best for your body. And there's so many times I hear stories where, you know, patients go to doctors and they're like, I have this thing. And the doctor's like, no, you don't, you're fine. And they go to, you know, it takes them to like two or three doctors before somebody really is like, oh yeah, you know, a professional can recognize that, you know, what you thought what you suspect, suspected about your body was right all along. So um, yeah, so with my clients, I like to set goals and um, design very simple plans, like nothing complicated, um, things that work for you specifically and for your lifestyle um, to help you look and feel great inside and out. And um, so yeah, that that's basically my, my class. And um, if you want to check me out, learn more about me or work with me, my website is sugunalorenzo.com. And you can follow me on Instagram at sugunalorenzo. And um, I guess I can open up the floor to um, any questions, if anybody has any questions. I haven't been following up in the chat because I, I can't. <laughs> Hello? Let's see, there's the chat. Where did it go? Ah, here we go. Is, okay, let's see. Um, so I'm just going back a little bit, sorry, from Ingrid. Um, sorry if I missed it, where do you rank cheese on processed food? Are there good versus bad cheese? Yes, this is a great question. And I'm glad you asked because I, I didn't really talk about this. Um, there are definitely processed cheeses that are pretty bad for you, like just, you know, the generic yellow American cheeses and uh, a lot of cheeses that um, I pretty much try and avoid cheese that's not organic or that's not um, like pasture raised. Dairy is a really tricky area. Um, for a lot of people, dairy does cause inflammation and um, 
And a lot of it has to do also with like your, your heritage, your genetic makeup, like where your ancestors are from and what they were eating, you know, several generations ago, you may or may not, you know, um, be able to digest dairy products. But um, that said, if, you know, if it's in your DNA and if it's in your heritage and your family grew up on a dairy farm and in, and you can digest dairy, I would just definitely say stay with um, organic and pasture raise is even better. Um, the, you know, eating grass and um, not being fed hormones is great. And also raw cheeses. I know it, it was controversial for a, raw, a while, raw dairies, but raw cheeses have a lot of enzymes and probiotics. And so to dairy, I'd say, you know, do high quality, but in very small amounts. It's a high ticket item like like sugar, you know, for special occasion or just a couple days a week if and in small portions. Um, let's see. Um, can we, Liz Diaz asked, can we have probiotics all the time or just during a certain period? Um, if you're talking about probiotic foods, yeah, every day, definitely you can have them every day. Um, probiotic pills. Yes. If you find something that works for you and if also your digestive system has been under duress and you're trying to correct some ailments, it's, you know, it's good to have some extra support. Um, when you're looking for probiotic supplements, you know, it's such a, a wide range of products out there and it's hard to know what to trust. I would make sure that on the label you read that they have studies and laboratories that, um, produce evidence based on on their formulas. Um, I can just throw out a name Jaro. They've been around for a long time and I trust them. They're pretty good. Um, let's see, is Liz also asked is spicy food good for the gut? That's also dependent on the person. For some people, it irritates your gut depending on what's going on. For other people, it, it can be great. It can kill bacteria. If you have a slow digestive system, it can kind of get things moving and add fire to your belly. Um, in moderation, I know as people age, sometimes it's harder, you know, their digestive um, systems change. Um, so if it feels good to you, then it is good for you. I'd say if you, if you notice it makes, you know, you have great bowel movements and more energy then great. But if it, you know, if something feels kind of funny after you eat it, I, would you know, either cut it out for a little while or just have it in moderation. Um, let's see. Um, Tyrita asks, my mom has acid reflux. She's 70 and hard-headed, especially about food. What would you recommend in terms of eating or not eating and convincing her to make a change? Well, that's a loaded question. <laughs> and um, geez, um, she definitely would need to talk with a physician or me. Um, acid reflux. Uh, I actually have dealt with that and it's very uncomfortable. Um, it actually, and, and, you know, this, the acid suppressants that they prescribe, the doctors prescribe actually end up doing more harm than good. Um, and so, um, what would I recommend, um, her not eating spicy foods and really fatty foods? Um, miso soup is great. It's very soothing. Um, lots of water, barley is also good, um, like a barley stew or even barley tea you can buy at the Asian market. But I definitely, you know, she needs to see, consult a doctor or you could have her, um, if she'd be open-minded to, um, she could have an, a free intake session with me. You can go to my website. Um, what is my view on supplements? Um, Le Leah, thank you. Um, my view on supplements, oh, it's complicated because, um, that market it's, you know, there's so many things that can pass as supplements and, and the quality, uh, 
of their production can be very like chemically based and very highly processed. And even companies that I've trusted for a long time will add, like I just found out the other day, my calcium had maltodextrin in it. And I, anyway, and no, and it had cottonseed oil in it. Actually, I was very disappointed, but I'd say if you're really interested in taking supplements, try and get supplements that are food-based um, that are whole food based. I, I think that'd be a good place to start. Um, yarrow is a great herb. Sea moss. I love sea moss, D. Um, I actually take it every day and I've noticed a huge change. It's helped with um, balance my hormones. My monthly cycle is now finally regular and um, it definitely helps with the, um, the daily the daily movements are, you know, rock star quality, if I could say that. So yeah, CMOS, I feel like I could, you know, do a, a little class on that. Maybe I'd, I'd like to do that on my on my webpage, a little video on um, how to soak it and process it and use it. But yes, thumbs up to CMOS. Um, the ketogenic diet of someone for autoimmune disease um, I don't feel comfortable recommending a diet to someone I don't know that I haven't talked to. Um, I'd say the good things about keto is that they're they're pretty much not into um, eating like a lot of processed carbs. Um, I personally eat more grains than most ketos. I eat a lot of legume beans and grains and I'm pro beans and grains, but, um, but yeah, with autoimmune disease, sometimes you know, um, starches and, and carbs can be a little hard on the body, but I would just recommend to talk to a doctor before you go on any diet. Again, my personal view is no one diet is right for everyone. And you really kind of have to figure out, you know, what type of eating works best for you. But I find that the more restrictive the diet, the harder it is to, um, maintain for long periods of time. So really just, you know, I think it's most important to stick with, you know, stay away as much as you can from processed foods and eat lots of vegetables and fruits and drink lots of water. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, Jaro, yes. Um, how to prepare and ingest sea moss. Um, we have just a few minutes left. Um, I think I <laughs> honestly, you can go to YouTube and they have lots of videos. You need to soak it um, for you, like rinse it and in um, not in tap water and like filtered water, you rinse it a few times and soak it. And then you have to soak it overnight and then you can blend it. It's a little bit of a process, but once you have that jar going and then you just add like a tablespoon or two to like um, smoothies or yogurt, but like do it if you're gonna do to oatmeal or cooked food, just add it at the end, don't cook it because then it will kill some of the nutrients. Um, is it okay to drink kombucha daily? I mean, it, it de depends if you're really sick and your, your gut is really kind of out of whack, I would say um, um, it's okay for the short term, but long term it can in, um, Long-term, I would say maybe not, but it's definitely a great starter after you've had like, um, after you've had like diarrhea or you've been vomiting, it really replenishes and restarts your, your system. So yes, thank you. Um, um, someone said that kombucha has sugar. It has sugar as a starter. So it's, it's, it's used in a way that's okay. Um, but yeah, I'd say kombucha is more like um, use it more medicinally and occasionally. And if you really enjoy it just for some fun. Yeah, some days I'm like, ooh, ginger kombucha, that'd be fun. Yeah. Um, oops. Let's see. Do we have any more questions? Wow. Thank you. These were so many great questions. I really appreciate um, all the enthusiasm and interest and and I hope to connect with you you can you know um, follow me on Instagram and message me or again check out my website um, I would love I know I know some of these faces here and then there are definitely some new faces and um, I would love to connect with you and everyone so thank you so much